right, here we go, everybody. It's Bubba Watson Day at Ping. The 2012 Masters champion has 600 Masters flags to sign, a photo shoot with his trademark pink driver, and he's picking up the lunch tab for the 800 employees here. Ping has supported Watson since he was a teenager and donated $50 each to Arizona charities for the first 5,000 pink drivers the company sold. I feel like I'm part of the family. I feel like the workers, everybody together is part of a family here, and this is what I love to do and I love to be a part of. So thank you all so much again for everything. He could well have been thanking the late founder of Ping, Karsten Solheim. One of the most famous names in golf, Solheim, born in Norway, wasn't much of a player, but he was a hell of an engineer. His first putter was not only revolutionary, but gave his company its name. The people said, listen to that ping, listen to that ping. So what other name could I give it? So ping it is. The original putter is still around more than 50 years later, here in the hands of Karsten's son, John, who runs ping now. You know, it's a simple blade, you know, just off, off center shaft. But two weights. Two weights, two lead weights, one in the heel, one in the toe. And with this, he, he became a much better putter. This was his prototype, I suppose. This was his prototype, probably in the, around 58. It took a while for what was then an odd looking, uniquely weighted putter to catch on. Karsten Solheim made them himself in his garage while continuing his day job as an engineer. But he was already thinking about manufacturing putters. He went to the bank and asked to borrow $1,200 to buy a mill. He didn't want to loan me the money. And I thought, well, I work for GE. You know, they wouldn't have to worry. What's happened, though, I haven't had to borrow any money since. <laughs> Solheim kept working on improving the putter's performance, asking golfers and club pros what they thought of it. And the pros said, if you can make it roll the ball as well, you'll sell a million. And he sold a lot more than that. The big break came when a touring pro won the Phoenix Open in 1967 using Solheim's answer putter. In the 60s, seven million golfers took up the game and they all needed clubs. Sales took off. Karsten Solheim became a wealthy man and was able to begin a unique tradition, the gold room at Ping. Every Ping pro who won a tournament received a gold-plated club, putters mostly, and an identical club went into the gold room, nearly 3,000 of them now. Joe Garagiola kidded him about all that gold. Hey, Carson, these are Karsten Solheim's gold-plated clubs. And you're gonna play with me? Yeah, oh, sure. Why not? You wouldn't do it in my neighborhood. <laughs> For Ping, irons were next, also engineered by Solheim, called the Ping I-2s, just as different in their way as his putter had been. Largest selling irons Iron in history. It dominated our sales for over eight years. By the mid 80s, the I-2 was so popular that Ping had 30% of the irons market. We changed the industry both in, in design to make a club more forgiving by giving the perimeter rating. Okay, it's, it's plus we added quality to it. Because of the fact every club was put right on the money, all of a sudden the other manufacturers had to start looking at what they were shipping. Well, the one thing I've told all my employees, we've got to produce quality merchandise. Because if we quit quality, then we lose our customers. Plus, the ping club was fitted to the customer, one at a time, like a made-to-measure suit. That was my father's idea, yeah. I actually uh, put cards in the magazines that people would mail in with their, their fingertip to ground, their height, their weight, and we would fit them from that. Flip forward 40 years or so, and the fitting now takes place in person with trained salespeople at pro shops and retailers. Billisari fitted me on Ping's practice ring. Uh, your wrist and floor measurement is 35 and a quarter. A pretty good starting point for you is a yellow color code. We'll, we'll talk about chap length next. Who the heck figured this out? Carson Solheim. The fitting information comes to the plant where workers in an elaborate assembly system using proprietary software turn out custom clubs one at a time on a tight timeline. My goal was if somebody ordered it on the weekend, okay, they would be playing the club the next weekend. Also using the range that day with me, Ping Man, a robot with a very consistent shot. Wow, look at the flight of that ball. 
Ping tests clubs and balls and records their paths with radar, part of the engineering that's in Ping's DNA. Ping, man! Golf industry sources say all that innovation means sales for Ping of $250 to $300 million a year. Bubba Watson and 21 other touring PGA pros carry Pings in their bags. It says to the golfer that Ping clubs can be played by the best players in the world. And the thing is with Ping, I can go get that same club and it'll be adjusted to fit me. But Ping's success did not come without controversy. The PGA banned the Ping I-2 irons in 1990 because it said the square grooves on the club face gave touring pros an unfair advantage. The United States Golf Association then extended the ban to all players, putting Ping's very existence at stake. Solheim then sued golf's governing bodies for $100 million. They thought it gave the player what kind of advantage? He, they felt he could spin the ball more. And, uh, you know, there's no question, it did spin the ball more. But your point of view, Karsten's point of view, is, was... Is we built it to the rule. Solheim eventually settled the cases. The winners were golfers because they could continue to use their, their golf clubs. The, the hardest part of that, uh, that settlement was getting my dad to agree. By the mid-90s, Karsten, in failing health, had handed control of Ping to his son, John. It wasn't the easiest of father-son relationships, but John Solheim has come to understand his dad. He kept pushing. He never, never would let up, you know, that his best product was the product he was working on. Mm -hmm. If somebody told him he couldn't do something, he'd figure out a way to get it done. And John sees a connection between his father and another golf character, Bubba Watson. Bubba. He, he's an icon, okay? He, he is really special. You have a knack for marketing. And the closest person that, it, that it's to is my father, Karsten Solheim. Because you're a little different on how you do it. And uh, that's the way Karsten was. This is Karsten Solheim.